Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today. We want to help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, clients. If you're in the longevity business today, give us a call, 844-236-6010 with your questions. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Please try to call in early so we can uh, squeeze in as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We also have blog posts up at criticalhealthnews.com and video posts at criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel or our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with 100% active and functional ingredients. If you're the kind of person that doesn't want to pay for stuff that you're not going to be using or that your skin doesn't use or that your skin doesn't want or that you got to detoxify, and believe it or not, that's what the vast majority of the ingredients in most skincare products are. They're ingredients that your skin can't use and doesn't want, including silicon, water, preservatives, fragrances. You're not going to find any of that stuff in our Truth Treatment products. Check it all out at truthtreatments.com. That's plural, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're talking fats and fatty hormones and the ketogenic diet and fatty vitamins, all that it has to do with All it has to do with skin health. That's how we started off talking about fats. But there's so many reasons why fats are important. Yesterday, we, uh, the last couple days, we've been talking about bile. Yesterday, we talked about the relationship between good bacteria and bile, probiotics and bile. Bacteria in the gut are so, 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 so important. Almost every day, we learn more about the health implications for good bacteria or the wrong kinds of bacteria, so-called dysbiosis. Yesterday, we said bacteria in the gut is important for clearing out bile, for processing bile, for, for cleansing bile, and for turning bile into hormones. Bile gets activated. Bile gets turned on into active chemicals that help support intestinal health and help support the, uh, the health of the microbiome. So the bacteria activate the bile, and then the bile turn around and and make the bacteria healthy. It's a big circle. This is how complicated things can get inside the body, and this is how interactive everything is, and this is why you don't want to be on a prescription drug unless you absolutely have to. The body's biochemistry and all the different components and all the different critters that live in the intestine, everything is interactive. They're all interacting with each other. And when you're on a prescription drug, you throw that whole thing off. That whole system gets thrown off when you take a prescription drug. And that, in a nutshell, is the stupidity of the pharmacomedical model. The interactive nature of all the various components in the body, when you understand how everything is all, even if you don't understand, but when you just see how everything is all linked together, 
you can see why it's crazy to try to interfere with it pharmacologically, uh, uh, unless you have a, some kind of acute emergency. Anyway, the bacteria activate the bile. The bile turn around and activate the bacteria. The bile that gets activated by, that, by the bacteria supports the health of the intestine. I would go so far as to say that along with the liver, there is no aspect of the body that's more important for keeping bile healthy, for helping the bile flow correctly and helping the bile act do its business, activate what it's supposed to activate, than the bacteria that live in our intestines, the good bacteria, the probiotics. Yesterday we said there's a, the, the bile does a big circle from the liver to the gallbladder to the intestine. It gets squirted out into the food, and then it travels through the intestine, and it gets sucked back up into the liver. But as it's passing through the intestine, it's reacting with all of these bacteria, and they're turning it on. This They call it modified bile. So these bacteria modify the bile. And this modified bile protects the intestine from inflammatory bowel diseases, from ulcerative colitis, and even from cancer itself, colon cancer, third leading cause of, of cancer around the world. Just another reason to make sure you're using your bioluminightly essence every day. Just another reason to make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes. Remember, your ultimate enzymes have bile in them. Your ultimate enzymes are made with bile sauce. They're not just for digesting your food via the, the digestive enzymes. They also help the digestive system because they contain bile. And you can take extra bile, too, by the way. You can go get, you can go get a bile salt supplements. Bile supplements. There's lots of great bile support strategies if you have intestinal issues. In fact, I would say for everybody, not just if you have intestinal issues, but certainly if you're dealing with ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome or, God forbid, colon cancer, or if you just don't want to have any of these health issues, get yourself your uh, stay on your ultimate enzymes. Get extra uh, bile bile uh, bile salt supplements. Use lecithin granules. Eat fermented foods. Make sure you're taking your bioluminightly essence and pro other probiotic supplements. Oh, here's another thing. Bile is made from cholesterol. Yes. That poor, poor demonized molecule, cholesterol, that everybody's all terrified of, cholesterol. Oh, we got to lower our cholesterol. Your cholesterol's too high. Don't eat foods that have cholesterol. Don't eat your eggs. Well, guess what? Bile is made from cholesterol. So if you are artificially, i.e. pharmacologically, shutting down cholesterol production because you're on a statin drug because your brilliant cardiologist told you you got to take a statin drug to lower your cholesterol, well you're not going to be making bile either, at least not uh, as much, or at least not as effectively. Why do you think the most common, or among the most common side effects of the statin drugs are digestive issues? Yes, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, loose stools. These are among the most common side effects from statin drugs. And so doctors, in their brilliant wisdom, will tell you, oh, well, take your statin drug with a meal, and that will help. Well, why do you think that helps? Because it makes you, it stimulates bile production. But just don't take the statin drug in the first place and figure out other ways to lower your cholesterol. The number one reason why cholesterol levels go up, if you're on a statin drug, listen up. Or if you know somebody who's on a statin drug, listen up. The main reason why cholesterol levels go up is because of sugar and insulin. The second point on the triangle of disease. Drop your sugar, lower your insulin, make your insulin more sensitive with all the strategies we talk about on this program for stabilizing blood sugar, and your cholesterol will drop like a stone. No cardiologist necessary. No pharmacist necessary. And no poison statin drugs necessary. If you, cholesterol, if you uh, artificially suppress your cholesterol, you're going to be shutting down or slowing down or impairing the production of bile. Now, if you've been listening to this program for the last day and a half, you know that's not a good idea. Oh, here's another thing. One of the ways that the body naturally removes cholesterol is through bile. Yes, cholesterol gets dumped out into the bile and then the bile gets excreted and the body naturally lowers its cholesterol. We don't need help, folks. We just need common sense, common biochemical sense. We don't need pharmacological help. This is a scam of epic proportions. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today.
All right, we're back on the bright side. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products or our Truth Skin Health products or skin health in general or ingredients, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have lines open for you. Try to get in early so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and take a specially long look at our Retinol 5% Gel, especially if you're dealing with acne issues, blemishes, hyperpigmentation, that's dark spots on the skin, or if you just want to prevent wrinkles, nothing beats retinol. There's nothing more important than retinol for anti-aging the skin, but you do need a high concentration of it. The problem with retinol is it can be a little aggressive and irritating, and that's why I came up with my Truth Treatment Retinol 5% Gel. Very little irritation, very little redness, if any. You will flake, you will peel, which is great if you have a blemish coming. If you notice that you have a little pimple that's about to appear and you put a dropper, just a little tiny drop, you don't need very much of our retinol 5% gel. It'll just flake off and you won't even get the blemish. If you have hyperpigmented or dark spots on the skin, not lipofusion, but melanin. Lipofusion is the deeper stuff that's kind of brownish. But if you just have like a surface dark spot on the skin, the retinol 5% gel will help flake that away as well. And of course, it's wonderfully anti-aging. And you get a whole bunch of vitamin C in there too. A lot of vitamin C. More vitamin C that you're going to find in, in any other, in, in, well, I'll say any other skin health product. And it's the good stuff too. It's not the cheapo ascorbic acid. It's the premium lipophilic fat soluble vitamin c all our truth skin health products feature premium lipophilic fat soluble vitamin c stabilized fat soluble vitamin c no preservatives no filler no fragrances just the good stuff folks truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay we're talking bile and cholesterol how ironic is it that when you take a statin drug you suppress the body's mechanism for naturally eliminating cholesterol it's not ironic actually it's just evil really because now you've got to take a statin drug to do the same thing that your body would do naturally. Bile is so, 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 so important. It's made from cholesterol, so if you're taking a statin drug, you're going to have a problem with your bile, which is why you end up with digestive sym symptomology. It's just anti-human being, folks. And what really gets me is when people are supposed to be taking care of us, people are supposed to understand how our bodies work, i.e. physicians, fall for this stupidity. Bile is a natural mechanism for helping the body lower cholesterol. You take a statin drug, you suppress bile, you suppress your body's natural way of lowering cholesterol, and now you've got to deal with the statin drug toxicity. Oh, even worse, what part of the body, what system of the body do you think it is that helps eliminate this poison statin drug? The bile! This is craziness. Oh, my goodness. All right. There's a relationship between bile and gut, back, uh, gut bacteria that's also mega important. This is why, by the way, or at least perhaps why, I don't know if it's definitive, but it makes sense, why there'd be a relationship between dysbiosis, that's messed up gut bacteria, DYS, dysfunctional, DYS always means messed up, dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, and colon cancer. If you're on the fence about getting on your bioluminite nightly essence, folks, and if you're on the fence about supporting bile health with your ultimate enzymes, you should get off that darn fence and use your ultimate enzymes multiple times daily if you can with all meals in addition to using lecithin and fermented foods. Anything that supports the bile system. If you're supporting your bile system, not only are you going to be supporting the digestive system, not only are you going to be supporting cholesterol elimination, but you're also going to be supporting the detoxification of drugs. If you're on prescription drugs, one, or if you're, God forbid, on polypharmacy, multiple prescription drugs. By the way, for you guys who know about TED, those TED videos, there's a really cool TED video that you can look up on the dangers of polypharmacy. Polypharmacy is when you take multiple prescription drugs. Now, if you've, if you've been listening to this program, you know we talk about it. Multiple prescription drugs are not the same as just one in the sense that when side effects are tested, they're not tested. They're only tested for that drug. They're not tested for multiple prescription drugs. So if they tell you that a prescription drug is safe because they did all the testing on it, they don't know about multiple prescription drugs. You know who the test is? You know how they test multiple prescription drugs? The side effects and the toxicity associated with multiple prescription drugs? This is how they test them. On us. On our grandparents and on our parents and on our kids. And on anybody who's on polypharmacy. Multiple prescription drugs. If you are on multiple prescription drugs or even just one, 
just another reason to support the bile system. Anything you could do to support the bile system. And that's where fiber comes in too. There's also a very important relationship between fiber and bile because fiber helps sweep out excess bile or old bile or dirty bile. Remember, bile is clearing out the drugs and it's clearing out the old hormones. It's clearing out cholesterol. It's clearing out lots of stuff. And the more fiber you're taking, the more efficient this clearing out process is going to be. So fiber, in addition to being a detoxification element on its own, is also detoxifying because it supports the elimination of bile. It has a magnetic, a way of magnetically attracting itself to bile. It sticks to bile. And as the, as the fiber is, is, is leaving the body, it's pulling the bile out along with it. So you got a, a double effect of fiber. Fiber is amazing stuff too for the detoxification, uh, detoxification system. Remember, all disease is dirty blood. And bile is cleaning out the blood. Bile problems are going to lead to issues with, skin, with the skin, milia, acne, oily skin. Bile problems are going to lead to autoimmune diseases. Bile problems are going to lead to uh, issues absorbing your fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids. So all of this is, is linked together. Fiber, dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, digestive problems, cholesterol lowering. It's all linked together with the bile system and the digestive system. And it's also important if you're dealing with excess estrogen. Remember, we talked a couple days ago about how women are more susceptible to autoimmune diseases than men. That's because of the problems they have with estrogen. And it's not so much estrogen, it's, it's broken down estrogen, metabolites of estrogen. Guess what it is? Guess what part of the body is responsible for dealing with estrogen? The intestine, bile and probiotics, good bacteria. If you're on the birth control pill, if God forbid you're on hormone replacement therapy, estrogen, and by the way, there's no such thing as bioidentical. That's a silly marketing term. There's no bioidentical hormone therapy. If you're on hormone repa HRT, hormone replacement therapy, you're on a prescription drug protocol. It's not bioidentical, even if a naturopath is, is prescribing it for you. That's right. Even if a naturopath is prescribing HRT and they're calling it bioidentical, I'm sorry to my friends who are naturopaths, it's not bioidentical. You cannot be bioidentical with your hormones. And your body has to deal with them like it's dealing with a poison. And it's dealing with your bioidentical, quote, hormone replacement therapy via bile, the intestine, and uh, good bacteria. If you're on these kinds of medications, make sure you're supporting bile. Make sure you're eating fiber, lots of fiber, vegetable fiber, veggie juices. If you're on estrogen replacement therapy, it becomes extremely important to pay attention to your intestinal health and to make sure you're using fiber and bile support. Estrogen buildup, excess estrogen, uh, problems breaking down estrogen is associated with cancer, malignancies. And this is one of the reasons why veggie fiber is one of the best anti-cancer strategies you can use especially for older, uh, older women who are more prone to, to bile issues. And that's also where the ketogenic diet is important. The ketogenic diet, uh, the ketogenic diet, uh, veggie fiber can help you if you're on the ketogenic diet because veggie fiber supports the production of new clean bile. And that means better absorption of your fats now that you're on the ketogenic diet. If you're on the ketogenic diet, you got to be really uh, careful with your bile because you've got more fat now. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, love to have you aboard. If you want to start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, or just help spread the word about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be if you're been looking for a network marketing company. I've been doing longevity, working with the longevity company now for going on, pushing 19 years now, 18 and a half years. And I've just watched the company grow like crazy. And the reason it's growing like crazy is because they got great products and a great strategy. And we help a lot of people, a lot of people. If you're interested in learning more about the longevity business or if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. 
or uh, Ben Fuchs Archives or uh, uh, BrightsideBen.com. Okay, so uh, got so much to talk about with bile. If you're taking a calcium supplement, bile is absolutely vital for helping the body absorb calcium. You know, every once in a while, every every year, a couple of years, you'll read about how calcium supplements are a problem and people are uh, calcification of uh, of tissue is associated with calcium supplements and doctors will tell you not to take calcium supplements if you have stones, etc. Well, it turns out that one of the problems with calcium supplements is people's digestive system isn't strong enough, isn't vital enough to absorb them. That's why the liquid calcium supplements are so advantageous. But if you're taking a calcium supplement, you better make sure that you're making bile, that your digestive system is strong and vital enough to absorb those calcium supplements. And that's where bile comes in. Bile salts are important for a couple of reasons when it comes to calcium absorption. For one thing, bile directly helps, absor- helps the absorption of minerals, not just calcium, but also zinc, strontium, magnesium. But also bile is important for the absorption of that all-important vitamin, vitamin D. And vitamin D is a key player in, when it comes to the absorption of calcium. If you guys are getting the, uh, getting the idea that this bile stuff is important, you better believe it is. Tomorrow we'll talk about how, uh, what you can do if you're on the ketogenic diet, how you can use fiber, and how you can use other supplements to help support fat absorption. And it's probably a good idea if now you're, now you're into uh, ketogenesis and now you know how important the ketogenic diet is for losing weight or for Alzheimer's disease or, or heart health issues or just for, just for being healthy. There's lots of nutritional strategies that you're going to want to use to help support the ketogenic diet. We'll talk about that here uh, in the next few days. I don't know if you saw this one, proton pump inhibitors. That's uh, Nexium and Prilosec, these drugs that you can get over the counter for, for antacid, uh, for uh, uh, acid reflux. Apparently now, they're suspecting that there's an overuse problem. Well, I'm not surprised there. In fact, this overuse problem is, is, is showing up in hospitals. This is from US pharmacist, overuse of proton pump inhibitors in hospitalized patients. Oh, by the way, proton pump inhibitors make your bile more toxic. Another reason to stay off of prescri- uh, non-prescription drugs as well as prescription drugs, including proton pump inhibitors. If you're dealing with GERD, heartburn issues, it's a food issue, wrong food issue. Make sure you're doing a food diary and eliminating problem foods, linking your heartburn issues to specific foods and then eliminating them. Also, using more stomach acid, like uh, apple cider vinegar, or the stomach acid replacements that's in the ultimate enzymes, betaine, HCL, that can help you with GERD. Even an apple can help you with heartburn. I know a lot of people, including my brother who gets heartburn, he, te- he says he uses, he uses an apple, a couple of bites of an apple. He tells me it's like a cure. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Do, we do have lines open for you. Let's go to Virginia in Ohio. Welcome to the Bright Side, Virginia. What's going on? Um, well, first of all, I don't have a gallbladder. Okay. That's my, one of my problems. I'm hypothyroid, so I'm okay. on levothyroxine. Okay. I have a when, bulging disc in my neck. Oh, my goodness. When did, when did they take the gallbladder out? Um, 1995. Okay, so 20 years ago. So how, uh, uh, how old are you about, Virginia? I'm 60. Okay, so you've been living the last 20 years of your life without the gallbladder, and your health dramatically improved when they took the gallbladder out, because that's what doctors do. They improve your health, right? Oh, sure, right. <laughs> So you got, On top you got of all that, well right again. Now, I, I have a sciatica problem, and I was going to ask you. I'm on gabapentin. I'm just taking it till after I get past the MRI. Would and they're really something? cooking you good, okay. aren't they? Yeah. You're on gabapentin and levothyroxine. What else are you on? That's it. Okay. Well, I good only for take you. some like herbals, like from Alex Jones, his um, like the fluoride and the iodine, those tinctures okay, they well, come up with, natural uh, stuff, so B12. Okay, so they're not herbals, you're taking nutritional supplements, in other words. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Guess how many gallbladders are removed out of people's bodies every year? Oh, probably way too many, yeah. Half a million every year. Oh, my gosh. Half a million. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Gall, did you have gallstones? Uh, yeah, they said, well, the, the lie the Air Force doctor told me was that if I didn't get it out, I would get cancer, and okay. I was young, and I just... Were you, in the air, were you in the service? Your husband was in the service? My husband, my husband. Mm-hmm. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What are we going to do? Well, here's first and foremost, you better get on the ultimate enzymes. That's like a, a, a gallbladder in a bottle. A, a, a gallbladder in a bottle. That's what Dr. Wallach calls it. You need more than that. But definitely the ultimate enzymes after meals and bile. So have you been listening to us talk about bile and the importance of bile over the last couple of, uh, last couple of days? I've only hit and miss because uh, I've had okay. other things. Yeah. Okay, start listening to the archives because there's so much to talk about. I can't, I, can't answer every, I can't tell you everything in a phone call, but we spent about two days, and we're going to continue spending some more time on the importance of bile. Um, at, if they want to put you on hormone replacement therapy, do they talk about that? Uh, no, and I wouldn't even go there, and okay. he kind of knows certain things I won't do. He, okay, a couple things you're going to I got what? lectured about my gallbladder the other, or not my gallbladder, my thyroid, because the other day I wanted to go on something natural, and boy, did I get a lecture on that. But you're on the levo. You said levothyroid. What was it? The, the, the drug. Levothyroxine. Levothyroxine. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, that's the wrong kind of thyroid hormone. You might want to tell your doctor that's the inactive form. Your body has to activate it and activates it from the gut. We we got a lot of work to do here, my dear. So here's first and foremost: get yourself. You want to start linking. You want to start to eliminate foods that are causing digestive distress. You got to have foods that are causing problems without a gallbladder. You want to start to isolate those foods and then eliminate them. That's the first step. Okay. That's always the first step, but especially for you, given that you don't have a gallbladder. The next thing you're going to want to do is you want to start to pay very close attention to fatty foods and fatty vitamins because you're going to be seriously fat deficient. If you're fat deficient, that's going to impact your thyroid, especially uh, with the fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids. So you're going to want to uh, get on an EFA supplement and uh, get on the ultimate EFAs, start taking three a day and then work yourself up to six a day. And then if you can get up to nine a day, that would be great. But take them with your ultimate enzymes. Your ultimate enzymes are going to help you absorb all the nutrients I'm going to tell you about because I can, I'm going to tell you about a bunch of nutrients that you need, including minerals and your fatty vitamins and EFAs. But is without a gallbladder, especially 20 years with Without a gallbladder, you're going to not you're not going to be able to absorb them very well. So you want to make absolutely sure you're doing things to help your body absorb these nutrients. So get on the ultimate enzymes with all your meals. With your meals, take the ultimate essential fatty acids, starting with three a day, working up to six a day, and then getting yourself up to nine a day. Liquid minerals are going to be your best friend because they're going to help you absorb those minerals. Uh, the liquid is going to help you absorb those minerals, but you still want to take them with food. Okay, uh, you're still getting some bile in your intestine. It's a little squirt that's coming in from your liver. So, if you take your your nutrients with foods, that's going to help your body absorb those nutrients because you still get a little bit of bile even though you don't have your gallbladder. Hang on, let me, I'll finish up when we come back from our break. Don't go away. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. We're talking to Virginia in Ohio. Virginia, I'm going to go a little bit quickly here because I've got a bunch of letters I want to get to. And we do have uh, open lines, by the way, at 844-236-6010 if anybody wants to get on board. Now's your chance. Virginia, so uh, you get a pen? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to focus on fats. That's the first thing. All your meals, you're going to take the ultimate enzymes. And with your meals, you want to take your ultimate EFA, starting off with three a day and building yourself up to nine a day. Make sure you're taking, getting some vitamin A, extremely important for the thyroid, important for everything really, but especially for the thyroid, you're probably vitamin A deficient. Uh, you have to go to the health food store and get some extra vitamin A. You'll get, you'll, have, you'll get some in the Healthy Start Pack, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, but uh, it's a good idea to take some extra vitamin A, 10,000 to 20,000 international units a day. Probably want about 400 IU a day of vitamin E. There are various forms of vitamin E, but for now, you probably just, without complicating things, just get the, the, the basic form, the alpha tocopherol form of vitamin E a day. I would also be taking 5,000 micrograms MCG a day of vitamin K2. And then you want to start taking some, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting some sunshine to get your vitamin D. But you'll also get your vitamin D in the ultimate essential fatty acids. Minerals are extremely important. Use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, sipping on it all day long. Make sure you sip on it slowly to start because without a gallbladder, you're at risk for some loose stools or diarrhea uh, if you take too much all at once. And this is part of what we call the Healthy Start Pack. The ultimate EFAs are going to be in the Healthy Start Pack, and then you're also, also your OsteoFX is in there, and that's going to get you your magnesium and some calcium, but make sure you're taking that one with meals as well. Probably a good idea to get on some selenium 
I'd be doing maybe 200 to 400 mcg of selenium, micrograms of selenium. Again, this is all with food. Remember, you got to make sure you're doing this with food to improve the absorption. And then get on the BioLumen Nightly Essence. That's our probiotic supplement. And uh, probably want to do maybe four capsules, uh, two capsules twice a day, maybe four a day. But if you can do, get up to six a day, that would be great. Make sure you're eating fatty food, especially coconut oil and fish and avocado. Need your fats. I'm sure your skin has got to be whacked out, and the fact that your, your discs are starting to fall apart and you got the sciatica, that's telling me that you're not rebuilding as you should, and that could easily have to do with fat, fat absorption or, or poor fat intake. So make sure you're using coconut oil and uh, avocado and fatty, fat, uh, fatty foods, fish. If you're a meat eater, you can do organ meats as well. Again, all of this is going to be with your ultimate enzymes. There's tons more stuff that you should do. But I'm just going to tell you a couple more things. If you can get yourself a Vitamix, you want to do uh, veggie juices with the fiber. The fiber is extremely important for your intestine. Remember, you don't have a gallbladder now, so that's going to compromise intestinal health. Make sure you're drinking lots of veggie juice with the fiber. And it wouldn't hurt you to uh, get a coffee grinder and grind up flax seeds. We'll talk about this tomorrow, the importance of flaxseed fiber and, and all fiber for intestinal health. We touched on it a little bit today. Start off slowly with the fiber, though, uh, because without a gallbladder, again, you might, have some, you might run into some problems with gas or bloating or discomfort. So maybe start off with a teaspoonful or half a teaspoonful of flaxseed fiber in a coffee grinder and then gradually build it up uh, to maybe two or three, if you can, two or three tablespoonfuls of it a day. Ground up, and I like to put mine in, in uh, uh, unsweetened almond milk and water and kind of stir it up and make a pudding, uh, but you could do it however you want. You could even do it, well, you should probably do it with some water, uh, and that'll also fill you up and also help you, lose, help you lose weight, and it will also help you reduce your risk of estrogenic diseases, estrogen-based cancers, which you're at higher risk for uh, further on down the road. So I hope that helps you, Virginia. God bless you. Good luck with everything. Any other questions you got? Got some uh, couple, um, couple minutes here. Gabapentin, would it be better not to be taking that after well, I, I can, you know, everything? For the pain, is that why you're taking it? Numbness, tingling pain when I sit down, not when I stand up or not when I you lay. Know, it's when I, when I is, it helping you? I, is it helping you? No, not really. They're well, not you know, you're going to have to make your own decision on that. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your doctor. You know, here's the thing about it. when you're dealing with a doctor and doctor puts you on a prescription, I can't tell you as a guy on the radio who's giving you nutritional advice, I can't tell you to stop taking your drugs. You you have like a de facto contract with your doctor, not a real contract, but in essence, it's a, it's an agreement with your doctor that he's going to help you and and it's not fair for me to say stop taking your medication. I will tell you that it's probably not in your interest and if it's not helping you, now you're just putting more work for giving your your body more work to do and I, I you know it doesn't make sense to me but i'm not going to tell you to stop taking your drug especially if it's not helping you it doesn't make sense to me but that's a decision right. you have to make okay, okay? one more question you Sh i should be sure. taking an active form of the thyroid med what do well you yes you want to add there's two there's there's uh, different forms of there's two forms of thyroid there's thyroid hormone there's t3 and there's mm -hmm. T4. T4 is the stuff you're taking, and that's the inactive form. And, and gut bacteria, among other systems, basically it's gut bacteria, have to activate that. But you've got a problem with your gut bacteria. So you may not be activating your, your thyroid hormone. So tell your doctor about activation of thyroid hormone. Is, is your thyroid hormone, how's your energy levels? Uh, horrible. Okay, so it's not even helping you. It's not even helping you. THS is normal and it doesn't matter. Yeah, Those are just numbers, I'm sweetheart. I'm having apnea and he wants to do a sleep test and all that. Here's the thing. You have sleep apnea too? I don't. No. Okay. But he well, here's thinks the, I do. Well, here's the thing. It's not your sleep apnea. Here's the thing. If they're basing the success of your medication, of your, your drug treatment, on numbers, on your TSH scores, those numbers are meaningless. They're set by the insurance companies, and they're based on statistics and actuarial algorithms and all kinds of weird no, uh, formulations, that whatever they do in, at the insurance companies. And then they stick you in, a, in the computer, and they see how you fit in compared to everybody else. But you're not, you're not normal. There's no normal people. You're an individual. So you can't go by standard reference ranges to determine whether a medication's working. You're tired. You've got other symptoms. Your body's falling apart. The chances are really good that your thyroid hormone isn't working. You're just taking a useless drug. So you're going to get, if you do everything I told you, you're going to find a heck of a lot more relief from your symptoms than you would from any prescription drug. And stay in touch with us and let us know how you're doing. Okay? I will do. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. God bless you. Good luck, Virginia. All right. Okay, so i uh, got a bunch of letters that I've been meaning to get to, and, and now's a, a golden opportunity to do that. Uh, got, a, got a note here from, uh, let's see, from Kim. 
my, uh, she says she's all she's almost 40 she has two daughters 20 and 14 we all have acne issues what can you recommend with this well here's the deal acne is so tragically unnecessary and by the way I did a video on acne at criticalhealthnews.com if anybody's interested in checking it out acne is a biochemical issue that involves food and nutrition and hormones period if you are dealing with acne, first of all, you should understand that there's different types of acne, but for the most part, if you are dealing with acne, the first thing that you want to do is you want to get yourself on a good nutritional supplement program that features 50 milligrams a day of zinc. A must-have for everybody, but especially if you have acne. And I like zinc picolinate, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E. Also vitamin A, that's the go-to vitamin. Zinc is your go-to mineral for acne. Vitamin A is your go-to vitamin for acne, and vitamin A deficiency is extremely common, particularly if you're having digestive health issues, particularly if you have something called fructose malabsorption syndrome, which one out of three of us do. And we're all eating fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and we're eating all kinds of fruits, and there's fructose in processed foods. So if you're dealing with acne, get yourself on zinc and vitamin A, and especially if you have problems with gas and bloating after you eat processed food and after you, uh, after you ingest fruits or lots of fructose. Vitamin A deficiency is extremely common with fructose malabsorption syndrome. If you have oily skin acne, make sure you're doing vitamin B5, maybe a gram or two of vitamin B5 every day. Please, please, please do not underestimate the importance of, link, uh, of food diary and eliminating problem foods if you're dealing with any skin issues, including acne. The way you can tell your acne protocol is working, by the way, is if your acne improves. It should always improve, and it shouldn't take that long. So food diary, vitamin A, zinc, vitamin B5. Selenium can also be very helpful. Selenium is wonderfully anti-infective. It helps the body's immune system, particularly something called glutathione. It's like a little battery that runs glutathione, and selenium deficiency is going to be common for most of us, especially if we're dealing with a digestive problem because selenium requires a healthy gallbladder and healthy bile. So making sure that you're using 400 to 600 micrograms of the ultimate selenium. And then, of course, please... Please, please use your probiotics, your uh, Bioluminite the Essence, which is the best probiotic supplement that I know of. And then caloric restriction is also important. Acne used to be called skin diabetes. It, some people still call it skin diabetes. And in fact, back uh, when I was in pharmacy school, they were still using uh, uh, diabetes medicine to treat acne, and successfully, because there's a relationship between excess insulin is an insulin resistant it shows up in insulin resistance syndrome and the growth or the the rapid division of cells inside a follicle so do all of your uh, anti-sugaring and anti uh, uh, pro-insulin or insulin sensitizing nutrients chromium vanadium sulfur as well as the b complex and of course the bottom line the basics is going to be your healthy start pack your beyond tangy tangerine your ultimate essential fatty acids and your osteo effects which you can get off of my website criticalhealthnews.com pharmacistben.com or, ben, uh, or uh, BrightsideBen.com, also BenFuchsArchives.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the relationship of, of fiber and bile. I'll tell you some interesting facts about something called phytic acid that I bet you didn't know. We'll do that tomorrow on The Bright Side. Have yourselves an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now. <laughs>